Morning, pot pickers. I hope you are well. Thursday morning. Cheers. Yes, the eagle eyes amongst you will have noticed that I'm wearing my leather apron rather than my usual rags. And that's because um, I might have to dash out at uh, short notice because I've got to go and collect my wife who is currently at the end of a short hospital stay. I think I'm going to fire up another one of those Perdomo Connecticut's from the mark. And uh, if it tastes just as good as the other one, then definitely be in the offing to get some. And I think I'm going to do that in the Robusto size, or maybe the Toro. This is the Churchill, which is 7 inches by 50 ring gauge. Toro, 6 inches, or 6.5, either 6 or 6.5 by 50. Robusto is 5 inches by 50. Um, interesting that they're all 50 ring gauge. I said that in the in the video that I did of the cigar, but it is interesting because most American ones would be 52. So we've had a bit of a up and down couple of days here. On Friday night, my wife had some terrible abdominal pains. And then again on Sunday. So we took her into hospital and uh, we were worried about appendicitis and stuff like that. But it turns out that she had a kidney stone. Um, got a CAT scan and it turns out she's got a few kidney stones, but one of them is on the move and in one of the areas which causes a lot of pain. I'm not gonna get into too graphic detail. Um, so, one thing and another, basically they, well, we went to see them, we went into hospital on Sunday and um, they said, they gave the CAT scan, they said that she's got kidney stones and, um, you know, hopefully she'll pass it within the next few days. And we'll, they were gonna send us to a urologist you know, in the same hospital, but the day had started to get late, and so they sent her home and they said, um, we'll refer you and somebody will be in touch in the next few days. These are packed very light. Well, not too light, but they are packed light, which means that it's quite easy to light because you're not having to light so much tobacco. It's a 50 ring gauge. It lights really well. I haven't toasted the foot. Basically, I want to try it out with my coffee. So they sent her home on Sunday with painkillers and um, drink plenty and so on, and hopefully it'll pass. Uh, by yesterday, which is Wednesday, we still haven't heard from anybody, from a urologist. And um, my wife just wasn't feeling very well. Um, she was on the painkillers to manage pain, but she just wasn't feeling right. She wasn't feeling herself. So we called the doctor and the doctor said, I want to see you come. Usually they try and do a, a phone call, but they said, no, we, we want to see you. So we went into the surgery yesterday. The doctor was really very thorough. She didn't want to leave anything, any, any stone unturned. And in the end, she decided that my wife should go in with the possibility of getting a stent put in to relieve the pressure. Um, in that region. 
and um, she, the GP phoned the hospital, got through to the urology department, which I think in this day and age is really hard to do, to start getting direct into the department and say, this is what you need to do. Bottom line is, she spoke to the department and said, this lady needs to be seen and um, it can't really be left. And they were trying to say, well, usually there's a 30 day period, she should try and let it pass naturally and so on. The doctor wasn't having any of it and she made sure that they agreed to see her. Anyway, we went last, yesterday, uh, yesterday evening by six, we arrived at around 6 p.m. Um, it was a very slow process. Um, when we were there on Sunday, it was a lot quicker. We were in and out within about three hours. Um, but on uh, about last night, the long process. Triage is usually quite quick, but there was a queue just to get to triage. We were in that queue probably for nearly an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Um, and when you're in a queue just to get in, there's no facilities. It's, you know, sitting down, there's a few chairs sort of haphazardly put there for people because the queue was there, but there isn't a proper queuing facility. There isn't a ticket that you can take or anything like that because they don't usually expect there to be a queue just to get into the building kind of thing. So that was already a bit of a, a bit awkward, especially for somebody who's feeling uncomfortable. Anyway, we got to the triage. Triage sent us through to another department to get blood tests and other tests. It was like a huge waiting room and there was probably 50, 60 people waiting. So it was a long wait to get the blood test and, and another test. And then they said she needs to get a CAT scan again. So that we had to wait for that. And then we had to wait. They were said that they were going to look at uh, very possibly doing the stent tomorrow. That means today it would have been today. And... Um, so they were going to book her in. They were admitting her, so that um, she'd obviously be nil by nil by mouth from about midnight, and then um, just liquids until six in the morning, and then nothing from then onwards. So they wanted her to be in for that, obviously to, to monitor her and make sure that she's okay for the procedure. So after being <clears throat> being there from six p.m., she didn't get to bed till after one a.m. So we were hanging around in this waiting room for seven hours, or near enough, and all together in various waiting rooms. And that's a long slog. And we you know, I'm, I'm always very proud of the NHS, uh, but that's a, a pretty long wait, especially for somebody who's uncomfortable. And obviously in a hospital, so everybody's uncomfortable. They've all got their issues and you can't expect to, to get any kind of priority unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, but still, seven hours is a long time. And yeah, I mean, if you put it into perspective, other countries in the world where you'd have to wait days or weeks to get seen, sure. I mean, as I say, I'm very proud of the NHS. And I think it's amazing that you have a problem, go to your doctor and you can literally, within the same day, get treated in a hospital. I think that's a good thing. Um, maybe, you know, if it'd be private, you get seen straight away, sure. But who can afford to be private? Anywho, this morning, she sent me a message I basically, I stayed with her throughout and I, I waited until she was in the room. I went up to the ward with her, made sure she was sorted. And when she was ready to go to bed, I went home. Um, I must say that usually the hospital would either not let you on the ward at night because the lights are out and the people are sleeping. And she would have been in a females only section. Basically, the ward is, is split up in rooms. And in each room, there's usually four or five, four or six beds. Um, and each room would be designated male or female. Um, so she would obviously have been in a, in a female room and oftentimes, especially at night when women are sleeping and resting or whatever, they wouldn't let a man on the ward. Um, but I must say they were very easy going. Um, yeah, the other beds had curtains around them and that's fine. And I obviously would have respected their privacy. Um, but they, I had no problem staying with her for about half an hour or so until she got sorted and um, I went off home. And I still came back and spent an hour and a half working on this. This is uh, my baby chrysalis. It's a chrysalis, but it's a smaller one. It's got some gorgeous grain on there. You just about make it out, probably. Same kind of profile, very similar profile to the chrysalis too. 
Obviously, I still haven't done the plateau and I've still got the stem to do. But um, it's looking good. That's going to be the baby chrysalis. Um, anyway, I got a text message this morning. That scan they took last night has showed that the stone has actually passed through without any problems. So obviously my wife was very happy, she didn't have to have the procedure. Um, so we're now waiting for it to be released. So it's now just after 11 o'clock and um, they told her that she can go, but in a hospital told her that you can go till you actually out, walk out the door. It can take hours and hours till you get discharged, till you get your meds to take home, all that kind of jazz. Anyway, so that's what we're waiting on now. I'm waiting for a call so I can run off and go and get her. Try to shape this one. I mean, it's roughly the same shape as the previous one. But obviously, it's smaller. It's it's not as wide. This one, with the other one, was about that long, and this one obviously is not as long. It's a smaller block. Um, it's got a nice sized bowl, perfect drilling, and um, and I've used the the sort of the salmon black Evernight, which I've been using recently, and um, hopefully it'll be a gorgeous pipe. It looks pretty. Whoops! It looks pretty clean, and as I say, the grain is gorgeous. Um, very similar to the previous one, and once again, I'm going to have a, uh, a bit of a decision to make whether I go four or five star. The stem is countersunk, and it's a perfect fit. So that's countersunk, and you've got the, the mortise in there, obviously, and it's nine mil. And that really fits in beautifully into that mortise. It's a real good fit. And um, this one, it's it's gonna it's obviously not a clencher, but you can hold it like that, and it will your thumb fits in there perfectly, and your little finger wraps around this a little bit, and it's a beautiful fit. And you can do the same on the other side. You've got the same sort of notch over there for your right thumb, and your finger can wrap around the end there like that. And uh, perfectly comfortable to hold. Somebody asked me actually if this was a, um, a unique shape to me, or if this is a shape that people strive to do like the Ramesses or, or arena or something like that and I said no it's it's, it's just a, a freehand shape which I which I did one day um, on a pipe the first time I did it was the chrysalis actually I should have that here somewhere yeah this is the first one that I ever did so a slightly different shape this is a longer a longer piece but equally beautiful grain not quite as nice as the five star one I did recently, but still very, very nice grain. Um, the actual shape of it all, all, all depends on the actual shape of the block, obviously. Because you're leaving the plateau on and you want to have the stem go into the plateau, so you're basically guided by the actual shape of the, of the block. So each one's gonna be slightly different. So you can see this one is a, it's like 180 degrees. Um, and it sort of comes down quite sharply, whereas this one is more of an elongated slope. Um, this one actually sold, when I first made this one a few years ago, this one did sell, but as I was about to, to ship it, I was packing it up and doing a final check, as I always do before I ship the pipe, make sure everything's tickety-boo, um, I noticed a fissure at the bottom of the bowl, which I hadn't seen before. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I had missed it or whether it had just come after I'd made the pipe, I don't know. Um, it's possible. Um, but bottom line is I felt that I couldn't sell it. 
So I got in touch with the buyer, sent them a refund, and I said, I'm really sorry, but I can't in all conscience um, sell you the pipe. Um, so after that, I basically gave it a really generous coating, bowl coating, um, to protect it. And um, I'm sure it will smoke absolutely perfectly. Um, there's plenty of briar underneath it. And um, if, as long as you know the first few bowls are smoked carefully and not too hot, it'll form a cake and it should be fine. Um, but as I say, I'm not sure I'll ever sell this pipe. Um, if I ever did, obviously it would be with all that information in there and priced accordingly. But you know, sometimes, especially if it's an iconic thing, if it becomes uh, a personal, iconic is the wrong word, um, if, it, if it becomes a, a signature shape, let's say, um, then it'd be nice to have the first one, I guess, or the prototype, let's say. So I, I would ima there's a good chance that I'll just hold on to it. Um, but I want to thank also Johnny, or as I call him, Shalot. You all know him as Onion, 2AM pipe on the patio. Shalot to me. Because he named, he dubbed, he christened the, the first shape the chrysalis. So that was what I adopted that name. So that was chrysalis number one. The one I did recently was chrysalis two. And this is going to be baby chrysalis. With everything that's been going on, I uh, almost finished this pipe, but I haven't had a chance to polish it yet, to buff it out. And the stem, pretty much done, although I have to still do the slot. Um, but that's, it should be a gorgeous, gorgeous pipe. That's a commissioned pipe. Hopefully nice grain, but this, this uh, shank adornments, I really went to town with that, and I'm hoping it will look gorgeous when it's finished. So that's pretty much you lot updated on where I'm at. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick up my wife soon and then just get back home and get back into work. If you watch the video about the cigar, I said it's very, it ashes very lightly, it's very flaky ash. Well, I just put it down gently and it, it ashed. That's just the way it is. So I'm up to 400 grit. I carried on working when I came home last night. I was too sort of keyed up to go to bed. I just had a bowl of uh, that vintage uh, audit golden slice on the way home from the hospital. And um, so I stayed in here for a couple of hours. I didn't get to bed till after three o'clock. Um, but um, I'm happy that I did that because I like to get sort of the base sanding done and then I can just relax and, and do the higher grits. I really enjoy doing the higher grits because it's kind of, um, that's sort of the, those are the grits that really bring out the, the final grain, the real, the contrast, the finish. And um, obviously you catch any scratches. You make, you try your best to catch any scratches. Um, at this stage, so if you need to go back to a, a lower grit, then you can do that. When you go on your final grit, you don't want to have to go back to 180 or 240 and then go through all the grits again. So um, when I'm at around 400, I like to make sure that there are no scratches left on the pipe. You know, sometimes scratches can get through and, and I'll finish a pipe and I'll find a scratch on it. It can happen. You know, as you get older, your eyesight's not what it used to, ain't what it used to be. But thankfully, I'm not yet at the stage where I can't see, so we generally sort things out. By the time I'm at the 400 grit, I'm usually good to go. And really and truly, if I really wanted, I could stay in it at 400. But um, I go up to 800 usually on a pipe. When I first, sort of early on, I experimented with adding another two grits, 1,000 and 1,200. But the, uh, 
the returns were diminished. I think that I, I didn't feel that I was getting anything in terms of what I want to achieve with the pipe. Basically, I've mentioned before that most manufacturers stop at 240 or 400. Um, according to the Peterson book, the big Peterson book, Peterson sands up to 240, which is a pretty low grit. I mean, it's fairly standard in, in, in the furniture world. Perhaps not the very highest end, but um, certainly regular sanding 240 is considered a high grit. Um, cigar's great, really is good. So my sanding process is, obviously on the sanding wheel I'm starting very low, I'm starting at 40 or 60 grit, really to get the meat off on that big wheel that I use. And then I go down to the small wheel where I'm usually starting at around uh, 150, something like that. Well, I, I do have a 60, just in case I'm doing some fine shaping, especially, which I would have done on this pipe. You know, to, to get the, uh, the beginnings of this line here and these sort of things. And I've done the coursework with the big wheel and then down to the small wheel. I use a 60, 60 grit for a bit and then most of the work is done on a, either 150 or 180. That's where most of the work is done to get the final shape. And after that, it's about smoothing it out. So I'll stay on the small shaping with the small little sander um, up until uh, usually 240 or maybe 320. Um, and then it's, I, I do by hand because and then even if I've done 320 or even 400 on the small sanding wheel I'll still come back to either 180 or 240 doing it by hand um, so the sanding wheel is a very good way to get a good basis but you, you can't avoid sanding by hand because you just won't get a good finish okay unless you have a slack sander you know the long straps those ones um, which I don't have so those you can get a good finish and you see you know a lot of uh, pipe makers have that i guess it saves them sanding time um, but um, i'm used to my process i don't have a slack sander i don't have the room for it never mind anything else um, and this is just my process it is a bit slower but you know in a way it's, it's a little bit more organic you're more in touch with the with the wood and you sort of feel it as you go along. I mean, you feel it as you go along with the slack sander as well. But, um, I mean, it's not to say that in the future I wouldn't have a slack sander, I don't know. But this is just my process and it is what it is. It seems to work. So a while back, as I was saying, a while back, I did go up to one, uh, 1200 on my sanding. So sorry, I was in the middle of saying, so I my process is, um, once I start doing by hand, it's 180, 240, 320, 400, 600, 800. And that's my process on every pipe. Obviously, unless it's uh, rusticated. Um, but even a rusticated pipe, I'll go up to 400 because it's really important to me that the pipe is a properly shaped pipe. You know, sometimes you can buy rusticated pipes which are a little bit deformed because if it's rusticated you kind of why do I need to bother sanding it you know I just get it off the lathe do some rough sanding and rough shaping and then rusticate it which you can do um, but for me I, I want the pipe to still be extremely uniform so that when you hold it up to the light the silhouette will still be a perfectly shaped pipe so if I'm doing say a straight walled billiard even though it's rusticated but the peaks of the rustication will all be in line and the troughs will be all random because of how it's carved, but the peaks will still create a straight line silhouette. Um, so for, in order to do that, you still have to sand the pipe. So I don't need to go up to 800 for that, but um, I do go up to 400, maybe 320. Um, and oftentimes, especially if I'm um, highlighting the highlights, in other words, if once it's all carved and rusticated and ready to stain, um, I'll stain it and then sand it so that the highlights are sanded, the low lights, in other words, the crevices retain. So I'll, I'll stain it, let's say, with a dark stain, then sand the highlights, the high edges, um, the peaks, let's say, 
so that the 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 troughs the carved bits retain the dark stain and then the top the top bits are sanded so you get that contrast between light and dark um, so if you haven't sanded the pipe beforehand then you basically have to do a lot more sanding at, at that stage once you've already stained it it's not such a good thing to do so I anyway as I say I sanded it to 320 or 400 even for, if it's rusticated not sure if that made any sense it was a bit, a bit of a ramble there I haven't had that much sleep so The reason why it's important to do so much hand sanding, if you do your sanding by hand, is that when you're doing it on the sanding wheel, you're actually, when say you're, you're sort of doing that against the wheel, the, the actual amount of wood that's touching the wheel is only uh, a thin line. You're not holding it flat on it, you're holding it at an angle. So you're actually only doing a thin line at a time. And what that creates is sort of micro edges, hard edges all the way along. And if you run your finger along it, you'll feel those. Whereas with hand sanding, you can then smooth those out and you can feel where you need to sand. If there's a bit which is too high or too low, you can then sand to compensate and make sure that you end up with a beautiful, smooth and consistently smooth surface rather than micro ridges. When you look at it, it might look smooth, but when you run your hand over it, you might feel little bumps, which is, is it the end of the world? No, but if you want to have a high quality product, then you want to make sure it's consistently smooth. All right, folks, that's been a bit of a, a longish ramble, so I'm gonna let you go. If you've stayed this long, thank you very much. Um, so I wish you all well, enjoy the rest of your week, and see you hopefully all being well Saturday night as usual. In the meantime, I wish you well, and I'll catch you on the next one.